Hey guys, last time we have seen the basic stuff related to motor controllers. Now it's time to get more knowledge related to that. So let's dive in. Now we'll jump on to the working of motor controllers. Motors are nothing but inductors. Due to EMF generated between rotor and stator, the motor rotates. These inductor opposes change in current. So when we switch on or switch off the current directly through the inductor, it will create a flyback voltage creating sparks, which can be very devastating. Hence, the motor controller dissipates the current very slowly when the motor is turned on or off. To rotate the motor, we have to generate magnetic force so that it can rotate. But just generating magnetic field is a waste of time if we don't know the position of the rotor. So we need a closed loop position feedback system. This system senses the position of the rotor and gives the data to the motor controller. Motor controller identifies the position and based on that, it gives the AC pulses to the motor. The microprocessor of motor controller does that job. So the processing speed of this processor should be very much. The motor controller uses the driving circuit and power electronic switches to control the flow of power from battery to motor. So how this accelerator and motor are connected to each other and how do they communicate? It's a very basic working. Accelerator of an electric vehicle is nothing but a variable resistance. A small DC voltage is applied to the accelerator module. One signal wire is coming from the accelerator is given to the motor controller. As you press the accelerator pedal, the resistance of the unit changes and it gives change in voltage which is sensed by the motor controller and based on that, the torque and speed of the motor is changed. So this pedal arrangement is very important and should be precise. After all, it's a matter of safety. Any fault in this may lead to dangerous accidents. We already saw the motor parameters. One of those is power and this power is divided into two parts as continuous power and peak power. The motor controller also works on the same rather more than peak power of the motor and we can actually limit the power handling by programming the current limit for the motor. Now let's talk about the features which motor controllers must provide. This motor controller should have programmable peak and continuous current ratings. It is very important so that we can use this motor controller for any motors. Motor controller should limit the functionality when something goes wrong in the motor or the powertrain system such as if the temperature rises above worst case assumptions due to overloading or other atmospheric conditions. As the temperature of the device increases, the power dissipation across the circuit also increases and eventually it decreases the efficiency of the circuit and might destroy the devices as well. Motor and battery both are very dumb devices so both don't know what the other guy wants. When motor is at peak performance level it demands more current from the battery but if the battery is about to discharge it stress out while providing the current and might deep discharge the battery. Hence battery current limit function comes very handy in this case. Fourth is regenerative braking. Well we have already talked a lot about it. I don't think we need to repeat that. Next is short circuit protection. The motor controller acts as a bridge between motor and battery. And if there is any short circuit occur in either side of the system, the motor controller senses it and switches off the battery supply immediately. If this is not done in time, then the consequences will be very dangerous. 
when the batteries are discharged these needs to be recharged again so while charging an enormous amount of power is given to the battery while the battery is being charged the motor controller has to be shut down it should not provide any power to the motor even if the user is trying to do so it is one of the most important safety features a motor controller can provide after that comes the sport mode eco mode boost mode of the vehicle it all depends on the current well these are secondary features that a motor controller can provide so a motor controller who is capable of providing these many functionalities it is no less than a brain of whole vehicle so that's all about the motor controller basics there are tons of more features which a motor controller can provide if you know about them please let me know in the comment section hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to my channel and finally thanks for watching